I've often thought that Raison is a, a director that appeals to each person so individually that everybody has his or her own what personal vision of what it is that the director has done. You don't have to like him or not, but you've got this vision. The people who revere him are numerous enough to have formed a sort of a, a group. I obviously am a member of this group. But there are others. I, I take friends of mine, you know, to see a revival of a Bresson, and you know, I tell them, now, you've got to watch this. This is some film. Only to have them fall asleep, or you start yawning uncontrollably, or afterwards the film's over, they oh, go, Jesus Christ. Now obviously these are friends of mine, they share something with me, we, we have something going or else we wouldn't be friends with each other, and yet we have such opposite reactions to the films of Bresson. And I think that's an indication of the strength of Bresson, is that he calls forth emotions to the extent that you reveal yourself in a strange kind of way with Raisin. I'm not saying that I'm better because I cry or that my friend is worse because he, you know, he goes to sleep. I'm simply saying that the wavelength of Bresson indicates that you have to go deeper into yourself in seeing Bresson than you usually do in the, the films of most directors. It, it, is it a Rorschach test? I don't know. But th there are enough people who are, 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 are sort of convinced by what he shows us that they first are willing and later look forward to, I've seen, how many times have I seen Oazard oh, Balthazar? Oh, many, many times because I like what it does to me. It's like traveling. You go to a city where you like yourself. I think maybe you go to a, a movie where you, 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 you like yourself. Other reasons may be for the, the persuasiveness of Bresson is the fact he's the only director that I know of that addresses our two senses simultaneously. Uh, he never shortchanges them. Usually most directors are going, you're going to show us this or we're going to make us listen to that. In the case of Bresson, they're pretty well balanced and sometimes the unexpected takes over. At the beginning of uh, Oezard Balthazar, uh, we get the whole thing, and just in the sound. We get the Schubert Sonata, uh, we get the you know, background noises, nature, they're out in the old country home, and this is broken by Donkey's Bray. So they've got the whole story right there. So he, he uses sound to, uh, to what? Encapsulate his meanings. Look at the ending of Oezard Balthazar, where without any comment at all, uh, just sounds, the soughing of the wind, uh, the bells of the sheep, and then the miraculous entry of the main theme from the Schubert as closure. Then we watch what this causes, and this causes Balthazar to gently kneel down and die before our very eyes. <laughs> He moves in mysterious ways to create an emotional ambience that means that I find it impossible to look at the final scenes of this picture without crying. I mean, for a picture to have this effect upon one time and time again argues for something which I really don't understand. But when the Schubert starts and the donkey collapses and the sheep gather, and the, the, the little bell sound, the combination of you know something awful and something wonderful going together de defeats any critical acumen I may have. And it, it reduces me to the emotional human being, which I think was Bresson's intention in making this picture. <laughs> 